What's going on, people? <clears throat> My name is Elliot. And this is episode 110 of Studio Practice. All right, I thought what we could do today is take a look at um, a, form of, a form of image creation, a form of creating an image space uh, that comes out of experimental graphic design process. All right, the big idea here is that there's unrealized power through the juxtaposition of two unrelated systems. Look at the composition of the white pasteboard here and note that it's, a, it's really a very simple composition. So both the ideas and the form behind this composition on the, on the white pasteboard were created in a way that is intentionally, and it is very intentionally unrelated to the yellow and green composition that it is superimposed over. Let's call them cognitive objects, and what does that mean? It means that you know the, the, these, op these objects, um, or this object here, you can think through, uh, backwards, you can think through these objects, you can both look at them and you can, uh, you can think through them. What I am going to show is I'm going to show the construction of, uh, of these pieces. I'm going to show the construction of these pieces. And I'm going to talk about what I see is uh, one of the primary methods that, that, kind of work, that this kind of work is, cons is made in. Um, and it relies on the, the, the rhetorical idea of the metonym. What is a metonym? Basically, it's taking term A and term B, which are two dissimilar items, two dissimilar elements, and bringing them into close proximity with, to one another. So through, through, the, uh, through the Gestalt principle of closure, anytime two dissimilar elements are brought uh, into proximity, the human, the human uh, psyche, the human intellect, strives to understand what the relationship between these these two dissimilar elements are. It's actually the stuff of human genius. So, you know, we're going to take a look at uh, we're going to take a look at how one of the operative processes in how work like this is constructed. So about six months ago, I, I determined that my studio was not nearly as organized nor as clean as I had hoped it could be, uh, which I respect to my studio. And so I spent a portion of my day both cleaning and organizing my studio. The, the, the mailing tubes that you see in the far corner of, of, uh, of the studio, I came across in one of my storage locations and when opening them, I found a series, um, a collection of films from the mid-1990s for pieces, uh, for a variety of pieces that I, I designed. The one that we see here is entitled Dress Like the Boss, which was a large screen print on, a, on Reeves, on black, 100% cotton Reeves paper. While going through this process, I also found, while going through this process, I also found press proofs or posters or prints, whatever, however you want to uh, characterize them, again, from my oeuvre, from my body of work from the 1990s. It um, dawned on me that those press proofs, those prints, could serve as an inter interesting tableau, an interesting surface to, um, to work onto. So the idea was to create a new body of work that literally uses and used the typography, compositions, drawing, photography, and many of the ideas that I was working on in the 1990s as the actual literal bed the actual literal surface upon which I would interject some of my most recent um, thinking, imagery, drawing, and making. Compositionally, it's as if the, the primary surface was created in a vacuum. So here we see a, a rescreen printing of a print of a poster from the 1990s um, that then gets 
intervened into with another new composition. I'm specifically trying to disregard the conceptual concerns of the original piece in order to create a kind of um, formal and conceptual friction, productive friction in the object. I work out most of the composition on the computer and then print out films for screen printing, leaving the color choices and leaving a lot of uh, mystery, for lack of a better word, in the actual object. Although when you lay, when you overlay the separations over the, over the films themselves, you can get a sense for what's actually going to emerge. A lot of the magic, I think, happens in the actual physical act of screen printing. I think over the course of making I don't know, about 150 different editions or, or maybe even more. One of the things that has struck me, one of the things that I believe that I've learned is that making really dr clean technical screen prints doesn't leverage, it really doesn't leverage the medium. So in these pieces, which I'm referring to as a 1990s remix, um, the 100% the cotton, the Reeves 100% cotton paper is, is hand painted. And it's intentionally painted with, I wouldn't say a rough surface, but an uneven surface. And um, so what I'm really relying on is I'm, I'm, I'm relying on the inherent hand quality and the imperfections in the screen printing process not to replicate digital printing technology or offset technology, but, but really to... to um, to leverage the misregistrations and, and uh, the texture as possible with screen printing. Yeah, so again, it's a really it's a really patently obvious thing to say. You know, it's it's, it's one of those uh, one of those issues that you can understand in your body and you can understand in your mind. But effectively, um, the corporeal quality, the kind of uh, the physical quality of the screen print. Uh, can become a very textural and almost three-dimensional object, even though it's it's uh, small. Now here, here is an artifact from the mid 1990s. Uh, this is the original dress, like the Boss print. And so this again, this would be the representation of System A. Now in this process of creating this dress, like the Boss print, there was an entire both intellectual and formal process that I went through to create that. Here is another one of the prints from today. This is from today, my most recent print. So the yellow and green print is one of my most recent prints. And it is utilizing this same process. So in other words, I've taken the Dress Like the Boss original films and I have re-screen printed them over bright color and then interjected uh, introduced over the top through a white key line. So here, here's, the, here's the print from the 1990s. And then on the right, we have a completely different system, this green and yellow and blue system. Uh, and this object that we see, this, this tableau, this, this uh, three-dimensional uh, landscape in a way, was created by drawing on this imagery, which is also from today. All right, well, now I hope I'm not confusing you. Um, but here, here we can see, we can see the 2021 version of this piece from 1996. This 1996 piece is offset litho and was constructed, was designed and constructed in a very specific way it says focus on the cathode kingdom and the focal length of fame. And basically it was a ballpoint pen drawing and some original, original typography and a landscape orientation. This piece, New Power, utilizes a typeface that I designed in the 1990s, two typefaces that I designed in the 1990s. But this imagery, this screen printing process, and this compositional sensibility really are emblematic in a way of what I've been doing in, in uh, 2021. But the, the, but the bigger issue is that this back system 
uh, the front the front system the color system is really being created um, almost unknowingly almost without any concern well with with almost no concern for what is happening uh, in this piece and I, I think that there's a, a, an incredibly productive conceptual and formal friction between the two different systems all right well I've been trying to get back into my YouTube channel. Uh, the fundamental issue, I, as I see it, is this kind of uh, cost-benefit analysis. And what do I mean by that? I mean that um, the YouTube channel takes a, a lot of effort. Now, it sounds like I'm complaining. I'm not. I basically am asking for some feedback. Oh, shit. See, as an example. Now, I should, I should record that over again because I got something on my jacket. That's exactly the kind of thing, or I just took my hat off and my, my hair looks fucked up. But I've decided to stop doing that and decided to try to, to, uh, to make, the, the, um, make the videos more organic. But I guess I need, or I would like to, to work this out in a way that, um, that uh, where I feel like the effort is worth it. And, and, and really, uh, ultimately, I think that all that means is maybe, maybe write a comment if you're into it. Um, you know, I mean, question or something. You know, to get some kind of dialogue, some kind of feedback. Some, um, so it, it doesn't feel quite like producing things in a vacuum. Um, yeah, so if you, uh, occasionally people have asked questions in the, uh, in the comments and I have, I have um, I've responded by sometimes making videos, sometimes uh, by writing. But uh, yeah, if you you could really help out a lot if you if you're interested in the in the Studio Practice YouTube channel by you know doing all that stuff that people do. I'm not going to use the language, but you know hit the like button. I guess I am going to use the language. Hit the like button and share it. But more importantly, um, write a comment or a question or something. All right, so I'm going to try. I'm really going to try to do to uh, to um, continue to produce YouTube videos. It's been an absolutely crazy year running a grad student and uh, running a graduate studio, and so my time has been compressed. But I really want to try to uh, to get uh, to get this popping again. So I'll see you next time.